Hey everyone, it is Friday, the end of my work day, and I am heading home to a very exciting weekend. I haven't made a video in a while, so I wanted to touch base and talk a little bit about something that's been on my mind, something I'm noticing uh, through the different dynamics and uh, uh, people that I've been running into in the community uh, in regards to mental health and ways that our local agencies, our local uh, community members are, are trying to address various needs and I'm very excited about the things that I'm hearing that are coming down the pike. I'm a little challenged by the fact that we may not have the technologies and the means to address some of these needs but I'm also very excited to see how different organizations and different people in the community actually um, get to a point of acquiring uh, new methods to address these needs. So you've probably heard of Viktor Frankl, uh, whether it's through his uh, book, Man's Search for Meaning, or uh, just through your studies or throughout college. Viktor Frankl provided counseling and therapy and uh, accomplished a great deal in his life and went through a great deal of trial and pain during the Holocaust. A few things that people don't know about Viktor Frankl in his early years is that in the community in which he worked in, he noticed that the students of the local high school were really struggling when they would receive their report cards. And they started noticing an increase in suicidality and actual suicide attempts. So what Viktor Frankl decided to do was to open up his own practice and provide students counseling free of charge at the local high school. And he did this by highlighting the exact Thing that was going on in a mean in a way of prevention so he highlighted or he tried to hyper focus on the season of time when schools would hand out report cards leading up to those weeks he would meet with students and he would be there present when the report cards were being handed out to meet with students as well to provide the counsel that was needed so that was a very targeted, very specific way that he met a need through a preventative measure, but also providing the crisis management that's needed. Later on, Viktor Frankl was in charge of uh, what they called a uh, suicide pavilion at his place of work. He met upwards of 3,000 women who were struggling with suicide and provided care and provided guidance and provided the counseling that was needed during that time. Another kind of progressive and creative way to address a need when maybe the constructs weren't there or available. There used to be a time where healthcare, whether it's counseling or care for physical ailments or illnesses, there used to be a time when those services met you where you're at rather than you having to go seek for it. Now there is something to say about having points of access and knowing where your resources are so you, can, so you can attain them when you need, but there's also something to be said about going as a healthcare provider, as a clinician, as a counselor, a therapist, uh, to have that motivation to go to where the need is, to address it where it's at. In the past, you would go to houses. In the past, the doctor would go to your house. In the past, uh, you were met by a professional rather than needing to seek out a professional. There comes a time for every community where they have to start making changes. They have to start making connections with the changes that are naturally going on to utilize the technologies and the efforts of others in a way that's collaborative rather than uh, creating isolation. So. I have a challenge. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this uh, if I set out to do it on my own. I'm gonna throw this out to the universe. And for those that are interested, I, I really urge you to, to figure out how to do this. Uh, I know currently Uber has a health and wellness program where if you want as a clinician, as a therapist, you can actually be part of this program and you can schedule an Uber ride or an Uber to pick you up for your counseling session. Now for St. Charles, wouldn't it be magnificent? Wouldn't it be awesome if someone, when they were struggling, they could let their therapist know, I really need to meet you. And the therapist can set up an Uber and they could go pick them up and meet in, at, a, at the office. Wouldn't it be awesome if somehow, I don't know, maybe grants were tweaked in a way to where they can provide for those kinds of funds, even for agencies that already exist, that maybe already have mobile units or people that can provide transportation. Someone who I highly respect, she and I were just talking moments ago about this exact thing, 
uh, in regards to our local schools, in regards to the needs that are popping up in regards to suicidality and how agencies can partner up with schools without everybody fearing fearful of where the money's gonna come from to provide for these kinds of services. Wouldn't be amazing if we were so centered on meeting the need, like Viktor Frankl was, uh, than meeting the bottom line. Now, of course, money is always part of every business, part of every service, but every now and again, it takes that one person like Viktor Frankl to say, you know what? I'm gonna provide this free of charge, at least until the collective community comes around and we're able to change things. There has to be those, for, uh, those forerunners. They've gotta be those leaders uh, that set out and make these things happen before everybody else catches wind and it becomes a norm. We want it to be a norm, but sometimes that comes at a cost and a sacrifice of the select few. I'm almost home, so I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna head into my office. So recently I've completed a survey that St. Charles put out, and I can't remember the name, I think it's called MAPS. And it asked about these things, about transportation, about the highest risk uh, population in our community. And I was able to answer uh, on kind of my experience and the people that I've counseled and the demographics and the needs that I see. And I feel like I'm not the only one that thinks it would be beneficial to have um, new resources, new points of access come about. And I wanted to put a spotlight on somebody. This challenge goes to Uber. So I'm gonna put the spotlight on you, Uber, okay? Here's the deal. It would be amazing. I know you do this in California. Wouldn't it be awesome, Uber, through your wellness uh, and health program, in St. Charles, where there's not a great deal of public transportation being utilized, uh, to provide the funds or provide the access for people who are struggling with mental health or suicidality to have their rides to their mental health professionals covered. Whether that means to the hospital or maybe just the, to, to their therapist or, or to their, wherever their treatment team is. Wouldn't it be wonderful if through the platform that you have for a therapist to say, hey, I'm gonna schedule your ride, it's covered, don't worry about it, they'll pick you up. And when we're communicating, if you need to meet, and you need to get here, wherever here might be, we can set that up and you no longer have to worry about that piece of it. The access becomes so much better. Wouldn't it be amazing if uh, multiple agencies, multiple schools utilized this kind of venture? So that's an idea I wanted to throw out there and kind of get everyone's take. Quick, short video to get some wheels turning in the community. So I'll see you later and hope everything's going well.